You can't understand philosophy and theology if your life is a train wreck. Um, this is why, you know, sinful men become degenerate philosophers. You know, you want to find uh, all of the wackos who wrote all the strange philosophies like Nietzsche. I mean, the man had real personal life problems with the solitary vice and was just a complete pervert, you know. And no wonder he was insane. He lost his reason, you know, because sin makes you stupid. And so this insistence on these electronic mediums for instant gratification, find an answer, copy and paste, what this really does is it turns us into Protestants. It turns us into, I'm going to find a citation, and the citations from whatever source I think is a good one, and then I throw that citation at you, and it's like, ha, you're stupid, I win. This is not how Catholicism works. This is not how any sound intellectual thought works, and I think AI just makes it infinitely worse because it literally is your brain, so to speak, and it turns you in, it, it's like atrophy for your intellect and turns you into an idiot. The Chesterton says in Orthodox, he says, we are on the road to producing a race of men too mentally modest to believe in the multiplication table. They're like children so stupid as to notice nothing paradoxical in the playful assertion that a door is not a door. You know, there's just this complete lack of awareness that people have about the paradoxical spontaneity of life. And how you can't explain everything. And that's one thing he, he, he hammers home in his book here. I think that's a big part of it. You know, he, he, at, the, at the beginning of Orthodoxy, he really shows that one of, the, one of the quotes that he says is, you know, a man does not go mad building a statue 100 feet high, but he goes mad conceiving of it in inches. You know, he talks about how it's not the, it's not the, mathemati it's not the poets that go mad. It's the mathematicians that try to fit the entire cosmos into their head that go mad because they're skull cracks. I'm paraphrasing, you know. Um, people today, we are so rationalistic. We are so materialistic, even Catholics. And that's kind of what Chesterton goes off in this book. He says, no matter what philosophy of life, because he starts from an agnostic perspective in his younger days and shows his development. And he, and he, and he basically shows like, I became, I became at the time Christian, but he really was, he was Anglo Catholic. And then officially a few, few years later. And he says, you know, I discovered a philosophy that I realized was called Christianity. And it was really, that was sanity. And the thing about Christianity that was so sane for him was that it was, it was, we don't have contradictions in the faith, but we have paradoxes. You know, one must die so that he can live. One must descend so he can rise, things like that. Whereas the modern world only sees contradictions and they try to erase the contradictions, which means they erase everything. You know, the Christian can look at the world and say, um, I'm a touch of the saint and I'm a touch of the devil. You know, I'm a touch of, uh, you know, whatever. Whereas a modern man needs to explain away sin because he needs to explain away the devil. And he can't let those two things, he can't let sin and, he can't let sin and virtue, angels and demons coexist. He must erase the one because it's not neat and tidy. And life is not neat and tidy. And, and, and in humor and comedy, what is, what is laughter? I mean, laughter is you recognize something that is surprising and incongruous and it invokes in you a reaction to something that is otherwise absurd. And that's why you laugh. This is why, in a sense, we say that chimpanzees laugh when somebody falls or something like that. This is why a little child, if you're in a high chair, and you know this, Tim, with your kids, you walk across, you pretend to slip a banana and fall on the ground, they laugh. Why? It's not, fu it's not funny that you fell. It's funny that you were walking and then all of a sudden you weren't. That's what's funny. Um, and I think we're so, so serious. People are so unbelievably serious that they just can't laugh. And when somebody is too serious to laugh, they're too serious to, to have joy. And if they don't have joy, they can't even really be a Christian.